Hi guys, um, in today's session, we're going to look at uh, the impact uh, of multi-turn ferrite core, okay? So as you can see here, I have three cores here. They are the same parts, which is uh, 0461 from ferrite. It's a 61 material, so it works from um, 100 megahertz all the way to 1 gigahertz. Uh, so this is exactly the same material, same size, okay? And uh, so is this one. So quite broadband from 100 megahertz to 1 gigahertz, okay? And we are going to test the performance of single turn, two turn, and three turn, and see um, see the impact first, okay? So first things first, let's um, normalize this um, system first, okay? Okay, so the system is normalized, as you can see, it's a flat curve, okay? So first, let's try just using one turn to get a benchmark result, okay? So I'm putting one turn ferrite core through this, this wire. As we can see, um, we have some attenuation showing in the graph. Uh, because it is a 180 ohm line, we know it's high impedance circuits, therefore, you know, if you compare with the data sheet, you will find actually, in reality, this one to the maximum will give you about 15 sort of sitting at 500 megahertz range, okay? So that's the maximum attenuation uh, on this um, 180 ohm line. So, okay, so we saved trace one. We're going to use uh, trace two to um, have a look at the two turn. Okay, so this is a two turn, same part number, but it's a two turn one ferrite core. Let's see the impedance against frequency curve. Now we put the two turn ferrite core sort of in the same position, and I can also save trace two. As trace three will just blank it for now. You can see clearly with two turn ferrite core, because the generally speaking, the inductance right, is proportional to the number of turns square. Therefore, when we have two turns, you, you get about four times inductance, right? So you can expect that impedance will have a jump. Uh, so that will result in this increased insertion loss uh, across the uh, low frequency range, as you can see. In the lower frequency range, clearly we have now much more um, impedance compared with one term. However, after this point, which is about 700 megahertz in this curve, you can see that um, 800 megahertz, the impedance between two turn solution and one turn solution is pretty much the same. And then from 800 megahertz to one gigahertz, in fact, the one turn is a lot better and two turn is about roughly 8 dB better than the two turn solution. And this is because in this frequency range, pre pretty high frequency range, the you know when you introduce a number uh, uh, an extra turn, there's a parasitic capacitance. Okay, so if you think about it, so these two wires here, right, will have some capacitance coupling between one to, uh, the, the adjacent uh, wires, and just because of this, you know. Uh, parasitic capacitance or turn to turn capacitance, the high frequency component basically will, will pass through using this uh, low impedance path. Therefore, um, in terms of the high frequency performance, two turn is actually worse in a higher frequency range. So let's see if it's the same for uh, three turn. Okay, so now we have a three turn ferrite core now. As we explained, um, Again, inductance-wise, it's about uh, nine times more than a single turn. However, now we have even one more turn, so you can expect that the turn-to-turn -turn capacitance, again, increase. Uh, so we'll see uh, since which frequency point um, you know, we have the uh, interwinding capacitance that dominates rather than the, uh, in, in the impedance introduced by the uh, inductance and resistive components of the uh, ferrite configuration. Okay, let's try that. So this is a three turn ferrite core configuration on the 180 ohm impedance circuit, right? And here we got the results. And as we expected, again, in a lower frequency range, because of the increased number of turns, 
this one again provides you on average 10 more dB reduction in a lower frequency range below 500 megahertz okay but quickly as you increase the frequency so here as we can see from 600 megahertz this three turn configuration is already worse off compared with the two turn solution right and above 600 megahertz or 650 megahertz really at this point it is worse than you know both the one turn and the three turn configuration so what we're saying here is that yes you can increase the impedance of uh, a ferrite core by having more turns however bear in mind that when you do that you will start to see that uh, resonance frequency uh, starts to shift into the lower frequency band so as a result you your ferrite core is more effective in the lower frequency range but you definitely lose lots of the higher frequency performance and in fact this is one of the main reasons that we've seen in the field where engineers put three turn four turn five turns and they perhaps suppress the noise in the lower frequency range and then they start seeing uh, noise in the higher frequency range uh, above the limit and they think it is a you know a, a balloon effect but in this case it's in fact is the parasitic coupling um, between the interwinding of the uh, wire configuration starts to dominate at higher frequency rather than the uh, inductance or the resistive part of the ferrite core okay so that's the first uh, point we're trying to uh, come across and now next let's have a look at ways of reducing this impact okay so we know that you know when you introduce uh, multiple turns number of turns you will inevitably start to losing performance at higher frequency but is there a way that actually you can uh, reduce this impact so let's have a look okay. for this demonstration we're using a nano crystalline core material because uh, some of viewers suggested we should have also have a look at the nano crystalline because it is now widely used because of their a much wider frequency uh, bandwidth of uh, of this material so here it is a uh, nano crystalline material core and as you can see one two three four four turns okay so it's a four turn uh, configuration of a nano crystalline core right and as you can see this is the impedance against the frequency curve we've got from this four term configuration okay First thing you notice that yeah it's not bad again at 500 megahertz we got 20 dB uh, reduction of the signal right and it is actually quite a wide frequency band it starts from very low frequency and only stopped working at least for the four turn configuration at 900 megahertz pretty impressive okay okay so we can save this and now we enable trace two okay. If you look at the equation of how to calculate a capacitance it really depends on how close you you get the two conductors right the closer they get the more capacitance you have so if we just spread the winding apart further apart would we achieve a better attenuation let's just have a look right so we can easily do this right as i can spread the winding further apart rather than let them get close together okay i didn't change the number of turns all i did was really if you look at it now the winding is further apart so effectively reducing that inter winding capacitance and as you can see i didn't drop the you know the insertion loss but rather i extended the effective frequency now up to one gigahertz and it's pretty impressive because from 600 megahertz you gain about 10 db more attenuation simply by doing this right and this is a very useful technique right simply spread the winding apart if you want to make a multi-turn core that also will be very effective in the higher frequency range so is there any other way of uh, reducing the impact of the inter winding capacitance well there is a technique called super torrid configuration as you will see here okay and we don't have time for demonstrating this today but hopefully we'll introduce these techniques uh, in another time